So this developed from a hunting technique into a show in about 1932. What happened was this. They built what's called the Tamiami Trail. That's the road that travels from Tampa all the way down to Miami. And it borders a swamp. So George would drive by and they'd see a seminal man on the back of an alligator. So just like anybody else, they pulled over, they asked questions, they took pictures, and then here's the key. They started to throw a little bit of money for gratitude. Concept board. That's one of the ways you can tell it. Like it's one over there, too. His name is Big Boy, actually, for obvious reasons. He's about 12 feet. He weighs almost 850 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a massive alligator for the state of Florida today. Average size here in the state of Florida, probably about the size of the little guy over there. And I say little, but Blackie over there is about 250 pounds. And probably about eight feet long, so he's a pretty good size out here too. He's gonna ruin the whole thing here, bud. So, we've got Blackie, Big Boy, and every other alligator out there in the world. Do come equipped. Come here, you. With 40 teeth on top and 40 teeth on the bottom, 80 really good reasons to find a different day job than the one that I got, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the bite pressure, 1,800 pounds of pressure per square inch. What that means, basically, is that anything, come on, Bubba, anything that gets. <laughs> okay, anything that gets trapped inside the mouth of an alligator. Are you going to let me do the bit? We'll try it one more time. Come on, Mama. Okay, so anything that gets caught inside the mouth of an alligator will remain inside the mouth of an alligator. All that for that. It wasn't very impressive anyway. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> We're going to show you this very handy pressure technique. I'm going to use the smaller of the two alligators for a couple of different reasons. One, this is the size of alligator that Samuel Man will hunt for. Obviously, if you're out in the wild by yourself and you have to carry one of these animals back alive, you're not going to hunt for Godzilla over there. Probably a bad idea. <laughs> Second reason, he's 850 pounds. I couldn't pull him out of the pit if I wanted to. So we use the little guy here. And I want you guys to notice when I move him around, I use the tail. Who wants to take? A wild guess what? Yeah. That's right, there's no teeth on this end. Exactly. So we're going to pull them out now in the wild, in the Everglades. An alligator will be what we call an alligator hole. Basically a hole just big enough to fit this animal, a little bit of water covering over the top. And even though he's only a foot under the surface, we won't be able to see him. The water's going to be real murky. He wants other animals to come over, take a drink from his water so he can lunge out, grab him, pull him down, and eat him for dinner. This is an ambush predator. So the Seminoles, Figure that out. They would locate these alligator holes, pull the alligators out, and then jump right on the back. How about a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? Woo! All right, now, we talked about the bite pressure of these animals, 1,800 pounds of pressure per square inch. But what I want you to notice is that their opening ability is not as much. So with my own two hands, I can hold the alligator's mouth shut. Now, I want you guys to bear with me. Pretend that I'm a seminal man and I just caught myself an alligator. The next oh, step for me, as that seminal man, is to secure his jaws. So I'm going to take my imaginary rope out of my back pocket and I'm going to tie it around his mouth. But, what do you need to tie a rope? Two hands, that's yeah. right. Gotta have two hands to tie a rope. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. something has to hold the mouth shut. So, Little girl, right here. Can you do me a favor? Hop in the pit. Watch this guy. He's pretty frisky, as you might have seen. Hop in here, grab his mouth, and hold it shut real tight for me. I gotta tie the rope. <laughs> Remember, the samples were by themselves. They had to figure out a way to free up their two hands. And the way they did this was pretty interesting. They would take their chest and their chin. I know, it sounds ridiculous. Yeah, right? yeah. And they would put it over the mouth of the alligator. Oh. Mm. Oh. They hold it shut just like that. Oh my God. Oh. Thank, you, thank you. So I have two free hands now. I can take that rope out. I can tie it around the alligator's mouth safely and bring him home to my mother-in-law. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Alright guys, I've been doing this for about five or six days, so I'm a professional. <laughs> the joke's going to get a lot worse, ladies and gentlemen. And this next trick that you're about to see is something called the Florida Smile. I'm going to do it on the count of three. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Like, I disappeared for a second. Alright, here we go. Florida Smile. One. Two. 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 Three. Three. <laughs> 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 Soak it in, ladies and gentlemen. That's the best trick you're going to see in this pit that I'm making. Here you go. 40 smile with the alligator. Remember, we talked about those teeth. 40 on top, 40 on the bottom. Every time they lose one, another one goes back in the same exact location. They'll go through about 3,000 teeth in a lifetime. I also want you to notice that there is little to no opening down this alligator's throat. That's because he's got a little flap of skin back there that he uses while he's hunting underneath the water. Remember, he's got picks up fish, turtles, even other alligators underneath the water. We had a chance to eat at Rustic Inn, and this is a little snapshot of the menu and what you use to break into the crab legs. I actually didn't get any crab legs. I got um, lobster, uh, mixed vegetables, and potatoes, and you're going to see a clip of that in the next picture. I ate at another seafood place called Dewey's, and I actually like Dewey's better than Rustic Inn. Dewey's um, menu, I got a baked potato, and I get a shrimp with tilapia. It was delicious. It's so windy out here, but it's free. That's Made it to my layover. This is a trip back to my city. Probably got an hour and 45, less than now. I just stopped at this place behind me. It's probably backwards, but it's called Willie's Mexican Grill. We got two tacos and some guacamole and chips. I love these guacamole and chips. So I'm about to sit here and eat that. I'm gonna head to my gates. And soon I'll be flying back to my home city and um, chill out for the rest of the day. I really had a great trip. I'll be doing a video about my trip. I'm going to do a vlog about my trip as well with pictures and things like that. So apparently I sat in the food area too long, lost track of time, and I don't think I actually had an hour and 40 minutes. It was less time than that. And so when I got up to go towards the gate, I realized I didn't have much time, and so I tried to speed it up, but I was not that close to my gate. It was all at the end of the uh, terminal. And so when I get down there, I don't see anyone standing by the door but two people. And I'm like, my plane's supposed to board. And that's when I realized that, oh my gosh, they're already boarding. Because I go up and I'm like, where are, the, where are they boarding? Because it's not even saying they're boarding for my, my route. And so I go up and he's like, oh, they're boarding for the next flight. Your flight is about to take off. And so I run to the next day and I ask the, uh, the lady. I'm like, my, they, they closed the door and I'm supposed to be on their flight. And I was so um, frantic because I was like, what am I going to do if I lose my flight? Like, how am I going to get home? And so... Um, she just calmly said, go down to the Delta ticket terminal, which, you know, she told me what was it. It was like 28C or something like that. And so I'm, I go down there and it's a long line. So I'm waiting forever. And they finally, um, you know, get me in and tell me that I'm going to have to be on a later flight. But the later flight was delayed. And so I end up leaving really late. So this is me looking at the flights because I was not paying attention and missed my first flight. And so I had to get on a flight, I think at about eight and it was a little bitty plane. The next picture will be just a snapshot of the city lights while I was finally on the plane on my way home. Hope you enjoyed.